a inexpensive Raspberry Pi B Plus case with a fan, looking good. Let's go ahead and unbox it, put it together, do a heat test, and also see how loud this fan is. Hello, good morning, YouTube. Today we have a new Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Yeah, I got a little heat sink paste on there. Um, 1.4 gigahertz Raspberry Pi released on Pi Day of this year. And um, so the cases are catching up. Uh, a lot of the old cases do work for it, but some don't. There are some extra pins like these four right here, and the, the processors are in a little bit different of a spot. So if you're on the lookout for a good Raspberry Pi 3B Plus case, this one got really great reviews on Amazon. This is the SM Raza or S-M-R-A-Z-A uh, kit. Now they sell um, about three different configurations, some with a power supply, some without. Um, some with the fan, some without. You can get a couple different configurations. They're, most of them are under $20, you know, around $17, $18. And um, you get a little instruction manual as well. So this is everything you get. You get the fan, heat sinks, nice looking heat sinks, by the way. And uh, power, a modular one. This is cool. It's not only modular here, so you can plug other USBs into it at, um, 5 volts, 2.5 amps, but you also get the switch, the USB USB to micro USB with a working switch. So that's a nice little feature. Um, that's nice because typically on a case like this, the fan will continue to run when you shut down RetroPie. So having a little switch to click it off will turn off the fan as well. And then when you click back on, it will also boot up the Pi. So it's kind of a, it's not the best, it's not a shutdown script. Shutdown script's a little bit better, but it's very close to that kind of solution. Um, better than having none. Now here's the case. I want to say this is very similar to the case I reviewed the other day. Um, you know, some of the noticeable differences are um, the screws being used. You have the little, you have just regular screws here. You might want to actually attach some feet to that. Um, and then as far as paper, it looks like there's only paper on the top and the bottom. Now we're going to have to unscrew this to get the pie in there. Um, it's very, very light. Um, these screws are even plastic screws, which is totally fine. It's a little cheap though, I think for some people, but as far as like lightness, this is by far one of the lightest cases I've ever seen for, for a Raspberry Pi. So it is very inexpensive in that way. The plastic cutting, you know, you'll notice with the acrylic and the plastic, looks good, it's nice and glossy. I don't know if you could see that, but um, it's got a nice gloss finish to it. Look at that, mm. very reflective too. So nice smooth gloss. I actually wanna keep this in, or <laughs> in order. You definitely don't want to um, mess up the uh, order because then it gets real complicated real fast. All right, paper is off. And let me just see, yeah, so this, I'm gonna build it the other way. So this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the fan next. All right, fan is mounted. It's very short cable, which is actually pretty good because you can, um, it's really easy to, to, you don't need to go that far on the pie. Now, uh, I'm gonna be building this top down. So I'm gonna start with the top because you want the top to have the screw head. You don't want the top to be a nut. It won't look as good. So if we want the top to be the screws, that means we have to thread the screws in first, the very long screws, and we're gonna build opposite up, which is gonna be really weird, I know and it's gonna be hard to figure out, but uh, we're gonna get there. Let's just begin, I have a feeling it should be something like this, but if the GPIOs are there, I kind of feel like it's like this. Let's try this first. Oh, they're both gloss sides, but I'm basically taking these and I'm flipping them over. Flipping it on top. Okay, this is, I can already tell this is right because we've got the GPIO uh, slot right there. To put on the pie, we have all these heat sinks to check out. So nice looking heat sinks here. You get two of the same size ones and then a little, little guy. And then, so I'm gonna go to the second to the last pin, red, which is the five volt, and then the one next to it, pin number three in the back. 
So from the back, from the upper left corner of the pie here, uh, nothing, and then red, and then black. All right, and then this should just switch on here fairly easily. That makes more sense. Boom. All right, cool. Got that, and then uh, we've got the thinnest piece up next over the where the SD card slot is, and then the next biggest, and then the top. Boom. Easy enough. And then you just gotta put the nuts on. Oh, no, that's wrong. You wanna make sure your uh, heat sink there lines up. There we go, now we're good. It's kind of a frosted gray. All right, and there you have it. All set up. The only last thing to do is get the power cord here. There it is. So you still got access to GPIOs there for ribbons or up top, really easy access. Still get to the camera port, display port. You still got all your ports here in the back. And then you got your USBs and things like that. There's a small little gap right there, not big. It's pretty standard on a lot of these cases. And then a big, nice opening for your micro SD there. Totally cool. I like the little slits here, a little extra ventilation. You got the heat sink access. And then, I mean, I prefer a rubber grommet myself. They're really cheap to get though, but the nuts act as a as legs, as you know, extra ventilation there. It's they're plastic screws, they're not metal, so they're not gonna necessarily scratch any surfaces, which I that would be my main concern with metal screws and not having rubbers. So cool idea to kind of skip out on some expenses. The fan is a 0.12 amp, and again, you could go into the five volt or the three volt, depending on how fast you want it. Um, let's go ahead and do an overclock test now. But so far, um, I'm gonna have to give this like a B, B plus. It's decent and it's inexpensive. Um, it will totally do the trick, but do note the plastic screws. We're gonna check the fan noise and we're gonna check the cooling. But, um, and it's also different looking. Most cases are clear on top. This is more of a dark frost on top and on the bottom with a black middle. So with all that said, let's have a, uh, a closer look. All right, we're gonna go ahead and it's stock clock. You can see the stock temp at the upper left corner. And we're gonna go ahead and max out the CPU here. While that's going on, I have the fan. I have it literally next to my microphone right now. Here it is right up to the microphone. Literally, that was a half inch. That was one half inch. This is the most quiet fan I've ever heard. It's got decent, It's. I mean, I can feel it exhausting out. It's working really well. Um, so fan noise, super quiet, and it's on the five volt right now. All right, it's just about done stress testing the CPU. You can see the stock temp in the upper left-hand corner, and then right after this is done, I'm gonna run the CPU readings, and this is in real time, so as I'm typing, you know, is the same as the video. I'm just type, type, type. So it, it's a little warmer than the previous case I did a video on, um, but as you see, it's cooling down just as fast. So um, not as good as a Wicked Aluminum or a Flirt case, but you're also not gonna have any Wi-Fi or Bluetooth issues because it's a plastic case, not an aluminum case. And then the fan is really nice because as you see, it really drops those temps quick. Have an exhaust fan in your case. So with all that said, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm gonna give this one a B plus. It's a good inexpensive case with a fan and the fan is quiet. I like that. I also like the powered button on the power um, supply. So cool stuff. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch up on the next one.